Hello, and welcome to my channel. My name is Jonathan Cohn, and today I have my book review of the book, The High Republic, Path of Deceit, the first book in Phase 2 of The High Republic. This is by Tessa Grattan and Justina Ireland. Before I get into my review of this specific book, I want to give a quick overview of my thoughts on The High Republic thus far so that you know where I stand. I have really enjoyed The High Republic as a whole. I thought that uh, the adult line has been superb. I thought that the first two books, Line of the Jedi and The Rising Storm, were some of the best Star Wars canon books. They did an excellent job setting the stage. They did an excellent job developing characters and plot lines and all this stuff. And world building, it's truly superb novels. I thought The Fallen Star was very entertaining, but I think I need to read it again to truly get more appreciation because as of right now, I, it's not as good to me as the other ones but I still think it's a very good book. Then I also really enjoyed some of the middle grade. I thought that both of Justina Ireland's middle grade novels, I thought A, a Test of Courage was a pretty decent, pretty good start. Uh, I thought that uh, uh, Daniel Jose Older's book, Race to Crash Point Tower, was fine. I didn't love it, but didn't, didn't hate it. Just thought it was fine. But I thought that Mission to Disaster was superb. I thought it was superb. First time a middle grade novel has impressed me for Star Wars. But so I've, I've, I've liked the middle grade, but I haven't loved it. Then you had the YA line, which they've had three YA novels. And I just have to be honest, I have not really liked any of the YA. At first, I enjoyed Into the Dark, but the more I thought about it, the less I enjoyed it, the less I would want to pick it up again. Whereas I picked up Light of the Jedi like immediately because I just wanted to reread it because it was so good. Uh, didn't really want to pick up into the dark again and really didn't care for it. Then I really didn't like Out of the Shadows and really didn't like Midnight Horizon to the point that I considered not buying the middle or the young adult novels anymore for, for the higher public because I really did not enjoy the YA. But I bought this because it is the first book and they were very purposeful in the re reasoning why they made this the first book of the new face. And I thought, you know what? It's still worth it to read it even if I haven't been enjoying them. So that's where I stand on The Higher Public. Enjoyed it for the most part, have not liked the YA. So this first YA novel, what did I think about it? I actually had a really good time reading it. I actually think this is the best of the YA that we've gotten thus far, and it is an excellent start to Phase 2. That being said, it does not reach the heights that the adult novels have reached, but this is still quite an accomplishment for the YA line that both Tessa Grattan and Justina Ireland should be proud of. The first thing I'll say about this book is it is significantly shorter. All of the other YA books have been more than 400 pages. They've been like 400, 420, some of them closer to 450. Midnight Horizon was a long, beefy book. But this book is really short, about 340 pages. And as such, it flies by. It's a super quick read. I read it all in one day. Uh, we had to close school for something at my school, and so I didn't have work to, uh, this day that I'm recording this, so I binge read it in a day and I loved it. I absolutely loved the book. I thought that uh, the, the plot was really engaging. I thought the world building was pretty good. I thought that some of there were some creative choices and themes used. Uh, and the characters were actually really easy to connect with, which is very rare in the YA for me. So I really enjoyed it. Uh, and this sets up so many mysteries and so many explanations at the same time. This book answers so many questions we had and it asks a bunch of questions at the same time. So that's all really good. I have a few things I didn't like that I'll get into the book, but other than that, really, really overall, really enjoyed the book. Uh, the first thing I'll say, or not the first thing because we've said some stuff. The next thing I'll say is that this book revolves around three main characters. You have the Jedi Padawan named uh, Kemvo... Uh, and then you have the two, Kembo Zink, and then you have the two characters that are part of the cult, the Path of the Open Hand. And that is, those characters are Marta Rowe and her cousin Yana Rowe. And I thought all three of them were fascinating characters. To me, the one that was going to stand out anyway and be the most interesting was Kemvo. I thought that he had the best plot line and his was the one that was naturally, the way they structured the story, Kemvo was going to be the most interesting to me. That being said, the other two characters had excellent plot lines that kept me engaged. They could have easily made Yana and Mardra, Mardra two similar characters 
that just felt like you just had two characters when you only needed one. That's how I felt a lot about some of the other YA novels that we've had. But they were distinct enough characters and they played off of each other in different ways that made me appreciate the story and made the story engaging. You know, very few authors, I think, can write multi-protagonist point of view stories well. You can write novels with lots of protagonists, but if they're all different from points of view, that's a very hard thing to do, especially in YA, because they're all basically either teenagers or just over being a teenager. And this book actually does it pretty well. I don't know if this is if the addition of Tessa Grattan was what made this work, or whether Justina Ireland just stepped up her game, or whether this was the type of story that naturally worked for them better, or a collaboration. I don't know what it was, but it wa- it worked. It worked for YA, and I'm really happy to be able to say that because Star Wars YA has so many times let me down. Uh, Getting into some of the the, the information of the book, this book revolves around a cult called The Path of the Open Hand. This is a very bold choice for a couple of reasons. For one, cults aren't used too much in Star Wars. They're kind of referenced a little bit, hinted at, used a little bit in a novel here or a novel there. But rarely are they front and center the main part of the plot. It's the main, this book revolves around this cult and the Jedi investigating this cult. And you see the inner workings of this cult. You see the themes that this cult has. You see the organization, the beliefs, the the religious, spiritual beliefs. You see the practices of this cult, the way they treat people who try to leave the cult. It's very much getting into cult stuff, which sounds disturbing for a YA book. This is a very tough thing to handle in a YA, and yet they handle it so well. They don't go super in-depth that you just feel, oh, I would never let a kid read this, you know. The the, the, cult, the cult stuff actually is handled in just the right way that it, it works for the story. Uh, and it's not too dark, but it's also not too light. They got just the right tone necessary for it. At the same time, we also have the, um, uh, we, we also have the, the plot, which is really interesting and small scale. YA is always smaller scale than the adult novels. The adult novels, it's galactic proportions. In the YA books, it's very character-based. And a lot of people who like character-based stories thus tend to go towards the YA novels. I tend to be more plot-based in my reading, which is why I gravitate towards the adult novels. But this tells an excellent plot. So when you tell a superb plot, I'm all for it. And the main plot revolves around the Jedi, uh, the Jedi Master, uh, Zelna, and her apprentice, uh, uh, Kem, why am I blanking on it now? I just said it, Kemvo, uh, Kevmo, however you say it, uh, the two of them investigating uh, this cult, the path of the open hand. And I actually wish that the authors had made the choice to just made it the Padawan and the Master, because to me, I really like just Padawan Master stories that just tell one adventure in the life of this Padawan and Master. I think that would have been a great choice. They went the other choice to actually make some of the point of view characters in the um, uh, in the cult, which still works for the story, just not as well as I think it could have, but it still works very well for the story. And uh, you're, you're trying to find out information about them, you're trying to find out what's happening, and this has greater implications for the higher public. For phases one, which we've already gotten, and phase three, which we will get. One of the things is the path of the open hand leads to some important High Republic organizations. The idea of the ship that the path of the open hand is building, when I read it, I said, oh, wait, they're building that ship. That got my attention. Also, you'll notice one of the characters. Her name is Mardra Rowe. You can figure out whose ancestor she is. You also have characters... Um, uh, in here and, and planets that will be important later. And they're setting up some villains and some ideas that I think will, that were not only used in phase one that I know were used, but I'm pretty sure will be used in phase three. I really think this is, I was, I was apprehensive about going back. They said they wanted to do the Star Wars structure of tell like phase one, is like the original trilogy, and then phase two is like a prequel, and it, although albeit a prequel that goes back 150 years, and then phase three will happen after phase one, uh, and will be like a sequel. 
But I was apprehensive. I didn't think it would work, and I don't think it was necessary. And I think they should have, if they were going to do a prequel, they should have only set it up like 10 or 20 years earlier, not 150. That being said, this, if the, all the books do the legwork that this book did in setting things up, I think that this will make me really appreciate phase one and appreciate phase three. And I think that it will have been justified it's happening 150 years earlier. I can't really get why and into why without spoiling it, but I think that there are things in this book that do heavy lifting that the book needed. I'm really happy with the way it turned out in the world building and the universe building. Uh, there are some really fun side characters as well that I can't really get into, but there's not too many. It's very balanced for a YA novel. There's more characters than a typical middle grade would have, and it's longer than a middle grade novel, but it's not quite as complex as an adult novel. It's just where it needs to be. It's just right. Uh, there are some themes that I disagree with and some worldview things that happen in the book that I disagree with, but I recognize all Star Wars books are going to have this going from now on, so I just move on and it's not a big deal. I don't necessarily fault the authors for having to put it in, but I still really a really great book. There were choices made that I would not have made in the book, but I think overall it actually really worked out and I just had a blast reading this book. And... I have been super hard on the YA novels. Like, I, I do know there are a few booktubers out there uh, who have been harder on the YA line than I have. Um, but I would definitely say, if you watch my channel, I'm definitely more hard on the Star Wars YA novels. So I'm not just, yeah, I'm not a shill for the YA books by any means. But I loved this book, and I had such a fun time with it. And I actually, at the beginning of the book, I was like, this is a solid, you know, three out of five. And then I kept reading. I was like, maybe it's three and a half. By the end, I was like, yeah, it's a four out of five. And the ending, boy, I wish I could get into it because of spoilers, but this has a controversial ending. This has an ending that is bold. It's a very bold decision in the way that they ended it. There's a lot of movies that end this way. But it's very rare for a book to end this way. Movies and plays have ended like this. Books rarely do. And so it's a very, very bold way to do it. I would, I would put this book has a very similar ending to Vector Prime. And that's all I'll say about it because I don't want to spoil it. So I loved this book, had a blast with it. I give it like a 4 out of 5 or, or if you were doing my 10-point scale that I prefer, an 8 out of 10. Um, I really wish Goodreads would give us out of 10 stars, but uh, 8 out of 10, really enjoyed this book. Still not on the heights of the adult books, but still really, really good, and I can't wait for the rest of Phase 2. This give, this book energized me. I was just going to read these books out of obligation because I wasn't sure how I would feel. Now I feel excited. I feel energized. I feel ready to read the rest of the books. Next, we have the middle grade book, um, uh, Quest for the Hidden City, I think, by uh, George Mann, who's written some for Star Wars. And then also we have the adult novel by Zoraida Cordova, whom I love. That's going to be Convergence. So we have those two novels coming up next month. But for right now, 8 out of 10 for Path of Deceit. By the way, you'll notice that the, uh, the the regular High Republic books have this gold coloring on the side. This one starts a blue coloring and uses blue logos. I think that's so to differentiate the different phases, and I think that's actually a quite clever way to do it, so really happy with it. So if you've read this book, what did you think about it? Did you like it as much as me? Did you dislike it? What were your thoughts? If you intend to read it, are you excited for more High Republic books or are you not? Let me know all that stuff in the comments down below. But until next time, I'm Jonathan, and thank you for watching.